Hello everybody, Megazard X here. Back at it again to give you another very exciting video. And for today, you know what? I managed to go through all of the new DLC for Splatoon 3 and its dub side order. And I have some things to say about this DLC. We've been waiting for the longest time to see, you know, what kind of new story element that we could potentially pull from Splatoon 3 in terms of its DLC. Like we got the first wave of just a visual aspect of, you know, the Inkopolis, the original one from Splatoon 1. We had that, and then for the longest time, we've been waiting for this wave two thing, and it, you know, it's finally here. You're able to play it right now, and um, I think it might have necessarily lived up to all the hype that I was personally thinking, especially coming off of Octo Expansion, which I dubbed as one of my most favorite DLCs of all time, though. But you know what? We might as well go ahead and jump straight up in this video so I can give y'all all my thoughts right here, though. But if you hadn't already done so, Make sure you're going to hit that like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related. I feel like talking about and discussing. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight up into this video. So to kick things off, the whole entire theme and the story behind Side Order is, you know, this is a new gameplay mode that basically takes place in a, what has become of Inkopolis Square, the main hub of Splatoon 2, and, you know, or if Team Order would have beaten Team Chaos. So if you remember and think back to the original Splatfest that ended Splatoon 2, it was Team Order versus Team Chaos. Team Chaos won, which we kind of saw the chaotic elements within the mainline story of Splatoon 3's thing. But in terms of order, we didn't get to see anything from it until this DLC expansion, though. So we pick off with Agent 8, who has been unexpectedly transported to the Order Sector, a mysterious world that is built out on its own unique rules. So Agent 8 wakes up, appears in Utopolis Square, and this strange little robot thing happens to wake you up. You figure out that that's technically Pearl in robot form. And she's here to assist you though, but you notice right off the bat, somebody's missing. Yes, Marina was missing, and we kind of figure out that she's trapped in the tower. So you kind of go into the tower and you work your way up through the floors. And you know, it's like one floor at a time. You work your way up all the way up to floor 10. We managed to free her and stuff. And then you figure out who's the main culprit behind this weird dystopian light society. Everything's white, you know, in terms of, you know, just everything's going on in there. And you figure out, you know, order is behind all of it. And, you know, through no fault of her own, Marino's basically the, the culprit of all of this though, but not directly. It's just more like an indirect thing though. This whole entire program thing with this VR thing she made, it just happened to go rogue up on her though. So it's up to Agent A along with Pearl and Marina, the hack their way up through the system to try to get up to the top of this tower, though. So when you first go to the tower, it's just 10 floors. You manage to save Marina and stuff, you get kicked out of the tower. And then you manage to figure out that, yeah, within this adventure, it's plays very similar to a roguelike. You'll go up into this tower. You'll try to get as high as you possibly can up in this tower before you might manage to lose all your lives. And at that moment, if you lose all your lives, you get kicked out of the tower. Now, along the way, you manage to collect these things, such as, you know, like these meme tokens. And, you know, with these things, they manage to power up your stats, whether it be your power, your agility, your maneuverability and stuff, or drone actions and stuff. Like, they manage to give you a lot of unique power up along the way as you clear each and every floor and working your way up to the top. Though. However, if you do manage to get kicked out, you know, all that currency managed to get converted over in pearls, which kind of give you more sustainable things that are like more like permanent unlocks that you'll have every single time when you go back into the into the game. So this could be things such as like max lives, you can increase how many lives you have, damage reduction, max armor, broken armor jump, armor recovery, broken armor speed, how many continues you can use, which will come at a cost of min bucks and then also attack damage. So there's a lot of different things you can permanently upgrade while you're going through and doing all of this. So in the combination of you being able to spend these pearls and then turn around and, you know, just getting these different tokens as you're going up through this tower, you kind of make yourself stronger with each and every run that you manage to go through this tower. Because after you get done with the first 10 floors, which is basically like an introduction to the where you save Marina, when you do the next main phase, which is like a you know, 30 different floors going all the way up to the very top. That's the main part of the game right there. And I will say this game mode does get a little bit repetitive, you know, rightfully so because of the fact that it's basically like a rogue style within a Splatoon game. 
Now, going up in this thing, I'm not necessarily the biggest rogue fan out there. I play games such as Dead Cells and stuff. So I was like, I'm familiar with the franchise. However, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. But I was wondering, with Splatoon doing this, as much as I love Splatoon, it's one of my favorite shooters out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. Put over 800, or I put over 1,000 hours in Splatoon 2 and over like oh, 500 hours into Splatoon 3. You know what? Splatoon will be the game franchise that would convince me to say, hey, a roguelite might be very cool. But did it manage to do this? Well, <laughs> after going through this game mode, I managed to hit the top of it. I think within the first three times, like I went through it once. I managed to die on floor 22 or so. The second time I just threw away my lives. I was just trying to get some of those pearls. That way I could get some permanent upgrades. I only went up to floor five because I did like some of the most high difficulty floors then on my third time going through the whole entire tower i managed to beat the whole thing so it really only took me a few tries to get up to the very top and i was like and while i was noticing this as i was going through there are certain boss floors usually happening on intervals of 10 and those happen to switch out and be a little different every time so there is a little bit of variety you don't necessarily know exactly what level is coming up next unless you spend some you know some pearls and stuff to figure out what boss might be on floor 10 and what be floor 20 and stuff outside of that you know all of the different stages are randomized you'll get ones where you basically have to destroy these orb light things where all of these um where all of these enemies will basically spawn out of you have one that's like a power control light thing you have one where it's like a splat zone and then there's one where you have to kill these fish things that happen to swim real fast and get away from you real quick and I think between all of those different types, those are the main type of stages you'll always get. Oh, along with the eight ball thing. Gosh dang, that eight ball one. I never really was a big fan of those ones, but those are basically all the different styles of modes that you will basically do every single time that you enter into on a new floor. They change it up with a little bit of variety in terms of like what the basic stage layout looks. But the more and more times you go through this tower up and down, left and right, they all start to seem to kind of blur together. You'll start noticing that certain stages happen to be the exact same ones. You know, maybe the objective happens to change on it, kind of similar to how like you have a ranked battle mode where you have like a splat zones, a tower control and stuff like you start noticing those little changes. I've noticed changes where it literally would make it go pitch black so it's hard to see and stuff. So, you know, they do little things like that to kind of give it a little bit of diversity, but at the same time, all the stuff just starts to seem very familiar. It gets extremely repetitive. Even for me, when I was going through the, the whole entire um, thing, just three times throughout the whole entire experience, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Now, obviously you can run through this game mode via different weapons and stuff you get these keys and stuff that you manage to unlock from bosses so you'll be able to you know go through the game with either like a you know just a regular slider shot you can go through it with a roller an octo brush basically almost all of your your main weapons that exist in the game just their basic forms because the fact that they'll come with preset subs and specials now, as you progress through the, the tower you know there are these little vending machines where you can actually switch out your sub weapons with other weapons as well as your specials and stuff so you know you can basically build different kits like at one point i was basically operating with a tenatech splatter shot so i kept the, the splat bomb but i managed to give myself triple ink strike instead of um instead of the other one with the trizuka so you're able to mix and match these things based upon your own preference with you know a random chance encounter because you never know what you might be able to possibly buy out of those vending machines and stuff like that though but at the end of the day given all of these different facts the different you know diversity in terms of the weapons you can come up in um the different stages that you're able to battle within this thing it's always kind of randomized you never know exactly what you're going to get you'll get so far pick you out of the system, get a little bit stronger, go back in, do this process over and over and over. And I don't know, I just don't like this style of gameplay, at least for me personally though. It, especially coming right off the heels of Octo expansion within Splatoon 2, I just thought that was just freaking phenomenal. Every level was different. You had different objectives. You had like a few different weapons that the game will give you to say, hey, you know, you can beat it easily with this, but if you want to challenge, you can beat it with this kind of weapon. I felt like the diversity of weapons, you were getting in, getting out real quick. Every level felt unique. Everyone felt different. None of them really kind of felt the same. And it was like all the stuff you would normally experience within the, the mainline campaign for Splatoon 2 or 3, just blown up, different, 
sort of kind of vibe and it just felt a little bit more impactful by the time you got to the end of the game don't get me wrong the final boss for sign order was really nice and cool though but i mean outside of that i, I just felt like this game was a little bit too repetitive at least for me personally i'd rather get into an experience get in get out i do understand the importance of this dlc with the fact that you know with it being a roguelite it's built in gear for you to play this DLC over and over and over without it necessarily getting old or getting stale in the sense that there's always something for you to do because this game encourages you, even once you manage to beat the final boss of this thing, it encourages you to go back and beat it with other weapons and stuff like that because that kind of gives you another little smaller objective now that the major threat's gone. Hey, there's also this other little side threat and if you want to completely knock it out of the park, we got to go through this tower several times over. But at that point, I was feeling pretty winded. I wasn't really motivated to go back up in there because every time I went back up in there, I just felt like I was seeing the same stuff over and over. It wasn't, you know, giving me that that strong diversity that I was getting when an Octo expansion where every level felt unique and stuff. Like there was literally over 80 levels within Splatoon 2's Octo expansion. And this one, even though there's only 30 floors and I technically there are more than, you know, just those levels, I just felt like I was seeing the same stuff over and over and over again with not that much diversity. Like if I was seeing something different, like let's say if there was like 160, that would be like a really big ambitious thing right there. But if there was like 160 different things and then you only had 30 floors to do it and it was always randomized and stuff, well, maybe I would have saw a lot more new stuff before, you know, seeing all of the same stuff over and over and over. But it doesn't feel like that. It really does feel like there's only 30 unique, you know, stages but the objectives are slightly tweaked for every single one. So I, I got burned out on this though. I don't know about most people. I know a lot of people do enjoy it. I know some people aren't the biggest fans of roguelite series. So maybe they didn't kind of, you know, wet their fancy or whatever though. But at least for me personally, I like what they did in terms of just a unique factor of them trying to do something completely different from Octo expansion and just try to do something unique. I give credit where credit's due. At least just for me personally, it just did not manage to live up to the hype and stuff that I expected within DLC expansions and stuff since Octo expansion kind of set the bar up pretty high though. Now there's also some cool rewards as well, such as like you being able to get decorations, stickers, banners, gears and stuff that you're actually able to carry over into the mainline game of Splatoon 3 where you're able to use it within your online matches and stuff like that. They give you good incentives as well as a really good special incentive once you actually manage to beat the tower the very first time though. But outside of that, I didn't really feel like there was any major motivation for me to go in into this game personally and try to beat it you know time and time over and over again so yeah so that's basically my overall raw thoughts on splatoon 3's side order dlc expansion right there y'all gotta let me know down in the comment section down below what all do you think about this dlc do you happen to like roguelites or do you happen to like splatoon you know strongly enough to where you know what you're okay with this dlc the way how it kind of shaped and pandered out the story and stuff i like it just felt overall pretty short especially considering the fact that i was able to personally beat it within like three hours at most three to four by the time i got through the first 10 and then the, the later 30 floors i don't know i felt like i got in and out of that experience way quicker than what i did with octo expansion i was like wait that's it. But you know, with roguelike games, they aren't meant to be extremely long. It's more so about the repetitive aspect. So I understand that though, but at least for me personally, I just wasn't digging it. There wasn't enough in there for me to incentivize, hey, keep going back in there time and time after again though. I don't know. That's just me. I love to hear about y'all thoughts down in the comment section down below though, but that's gonna basically do it in terms of today's video though. So if you really like this, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related I feel like talking about and discussing. So remember y'all, it's a video I make next. See y'all.